Hello folks and welcome to another quite belated calculator video. This is the faucet ESA0. You have seen it before once. Well, for the first time you saw this machine, it was about one year ago, just before the capacitor exploded, which, well, I go into a bit more detail on that in another video, which I uploaded a week or so ago. This is a fully automatic desktop calculator. It's designed by Fawcett, a calculator brand produced by the Swedish industrial, um, I would say, giant, Åtvida Berg, that had their factory, appropriately enough, in a um, township called Åtvida Berg. It is quite a hefty machine, weighs about 12 kilos, which, well, 2.2, so I would say, well, let's just try it, shall we? So it's 12 kilos times 2.2, one decimal. Yes, so 26.4 pounds, all in all. The name ESA is an abbreviation in Swedish. It stands for Elektriska Superautomaten, where automat is... Um, the Swedish word for automatic, I would say that um, it's how these companies refer to a machine that carried out its operations automatically without any extra user input. It works on the pinwheel principle, much like the Fawcett TK or the original Odner or Walther WSR. And as a result, the machine is actually quite compact, because unlike things like the Frieden and the Monroe with the Leibniz wheels, this one actually manages to encapsulate all of that in a small rotor uh, that's housed in this segment of the machine here. However, as a result of this, despite being a lot lighter than these machines, it throws a lot of weight around, and this makes the table wobble. But luckily, I have a solution. This thing right here, this, unlike the time that Han Solo teamed up with the Doctor to stop Doctor No from taking over the Enterprise, is actually cannon. It weighs, I would say, another 12 kilos, and it's great to keep the table from upending. Additionally, I have brought along a, well, this is the mystery egg right here. Who knows what it does really, but it's apt for showing just how much things can wobble, even with the cannon present. So without further ado, I've gone far too long into this. So let's cover the machine itself. It does what you would expect. It has a master control lever. Unlike other machines that you switch into multiplication mode, addition mode, or the division mode, depending on your needs. Additionally, on the right hand side, there is a counter reverse lever that toggles which uh, direction the counter register is going to turn relative to the kind of operation you do. As you can see, when it's in inverted mode, this little red indicator, well, I was about to say lights up, but that's not strictly speaking true. Addition can be done in several ways. You have the regular addition, which is just by pressing on the button aptly labeled add. And it automatically clears itself, similar to a modern calculator. And then, of course, I would have the repeat addition, which is done using this button which is, strangely enough, it has a cross on it, much like it would be in case it was multiplication. But in practice, this just means add without clearing. Subtraction can also be done by pressing on this button. Now, you may recognize this as the division symbol on a modern calculator, but in Europe, the symbol for division is actually these two dots right here. On some older models, like the Celatron, the division button is actually labeled with these two. 
and the minus is just your plain old minus sign. And to subtract, you press on it. In case you're feeling lazy and you would like to clear automatically, then you hold the sub stop down and then you press the divide. And it will even give your uh, long finger a little bit of a bump when you do that, interestingly enough. The dash zero in the name comes from the electric clearing. Earlier uh, Fawcett ESA models would have a couple of clearing levers here that you would push down to clear the registers. This one has electric clearing. Of course if it's out of cycle then I have to hold the button down for a bit before it will take. And the machine is now cleared, ready for use again. It also has a couple of carriage step keys which are useful in some advanced operations or in case you're doing something manually. Most of the time you won't need it because the machine is indeed an automatic. So for an easy task, multiplication, it has quite an interesting trait compared to other calculators. Now if we look at this 457 multiplied by 1245. Behold what it does in the counter register. Now it actually has a very clever mode of operation here. As you can see, it smartly figures out whether or not it should subtract and then make a correction later on, or if it should perform additions. Because of course, if the digit is seven, then three subtractions is faster, or three subtractions and one addition is faster than seven additions. This is not a very common feature on calculators. I've only ever seen it on the Fawcett models and the Heyman Automata S. Similarly, I guess that it lacks the back transfer feature, but it does have automatic squaring. So let's take 256 and then square it. And it's 65,536. So that is 256 times 256. And clearing can be achieved by pressing on all three buttons at the same time, in case you are pressed for time. And frankly, given the cost of these machines, now these were quite expensive devices. You wouldn't really be using one of these if you didn't feel like time was of the essence. Additionally, we have the well, division. So perhaps I should call it divisionally. And the normal division for pi still stands. 355 is input. The carriage is shifted to the extreme left and an addition is done. Now, look what happens to the counter register. If you now very carefully observe that nothing happened, you would be correct because in division mode, additive turns does not impact on the register, only subtractive turns. So, and of course, 355 divided by 113 gives us a good estimate. So I move the decimal marker into place and it, I can see here that we have 10 decimals we have three decimals here and the decimal placement is 10 minus 3 and I move this marker to the 7 position. Then I simply press on the divide key. Without the cannon the table would have shook a lot more let me tell you. So we can simply read our quotient 
in the quotient register or in the counter as 3.1415929. We have our remainder here which is 0 0.0000023000. And the divisor is still in the accum no, not the accumulator register, the setting register. So I clear the setting register. One way that these machines could be used is to calculate something like subtotals. Let's say, for example, that you want to tally several different things at once like uh, you would have it kept in the division mode. You would press 345 for 55 and one, two, three. As you can see, the quotient register is entirely unaffected. However, if we want to tally what we have, no, not one, 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 just the one, and then we step to the first uh, digit or most significant digit in our uh, subtotal, and I press on divide. And we can see that it has now been transferred into the quotient register. If we do another one, 935, 543, 31, we get 2148. But we do like to summarize, so let's add it to our subtotal. Now, let's for argument's sake say that we are dealing with uh, our salesman in the field. And interestingly enough, two salesmen have been quite decent at bringing in the weekly revenue. However, one of them has had an unfortunate tendency to, well, upsell the products. He's a little bit of a bumbler. He's dropping his briefcase, ruining the samples and the product. So we have had some quite expensive returns. and. Regrettably, one of those wound up costing 245 units of currency. Another one was really expensive. A customer came back with um, quite the fancy calculator and goodness knows that it was quite, quite costly for us. So he actually wound up landing the company in such hot water that we lost 5,790 units of currency. Can you believe it? And if we see how this affects our subtotal with all of these losses that Joe Q Bumbler has achieved, we have to switch it to the other mode of operation. And then we commit it to our subtotal. This is going to be a painful watch, I'm afraid. Yes. As you can see, we have here nine. Yeah, this is a complement number, so good grief. Well, complement numbers, this is about minus negative 2,800, no, 2,900-ish, but that's not so easy to look at. So let's take 999, seven, oh, switch to addition mode, and then subtract once. And we can see that the total loss for this week is 2,964 units of currency. Rest assured that Joe Q Bumbler is going to feel that coming out of his paycheck. Good grief. But at least the repair technicians were happy. I think they managed to uh, beat the pro rating this week, so someone's loss is another one's gain. And that is basically the 
overall features of the machine, including some special use cases actually. Now, a practical use for these machines would be things like interest calculations. So, let's figure out how much we are due on a loan that pays interest quarterly and our holding in the bond in question is, let's say, 12,000 and the interest rate is 5.5%. So, first of all, we need to calculate how much we are due. So, 5.5%. Well, of course, multiplication master mode. See that we have 5.5%, but of course, this is a percentage. So we have three decimals, and this means that in our position of 12,000, we end up with, see, that's 1,200, 12,000, no decimals. So there will be three decimals in the result. And here we go. So we can see that on a full year, we were supposed to be due 660 units of currency. However, of course, since this is only paying semi-annually, we need to figure out what that actually entails for us. So I will clear the setting register, counter, and I will take zero, nine, two. I will multiply it by 660, clear the accumulator, and run the multiplication. And here we see that this nets us with uh, a zero decimal placement of 60,720. But that's not yet quite right. We want zero, seven, and we want to divide it by the number of days in the year. And this gives us a grand total of eight decimals there. And the number of days in the year is 360. And this means that our decimal count is eight minus three. Therefore, it is five. And we run the division. And so we can see that we are due to be paid 168.67 units of currency. Of course, rounding accordingly to the six on the second decimal position, no, third decimal position. I'm a little bit misaligned because I'm sitting right next to the camera. You'd be surprised at how difficult it is to work these machines while uh, looking through a viewfinder or beside a camera. Especially something like the Fawcett ESA where you actually end up with uh, a rather quite deep uh, setting register so that the um, decimal markers are perfectly fine if you're looking at them head on, but a kind of askew when looked at from the side. Now, if you ask me, I think this is one of the most impressive electromechanical calculators that I own, because it is the smallest. It is quite hefty, it likes to jostle the table quite a fair bit, it's loud, it's, well, I couldn't possibly imagine working in an office with a myriad ones of these working. But the thing is that it looks absolutely stunning. It is quite unique in that it's one of the few electromechanical machines that I have seen that has serial input 
with the keyboard. And that actually enables the size. Downside, of course, being the massive spinny pinwheel that makes the machine jostle the table around like nobody's business. And an interesting quirk is the master mode lever, where other machines had different buttons for everything. This one needs you to tell it a little bit what to do. For instance, the addition division mode switch spares it a couple of enter dividend and uh, division buttons compared to larger machines. The shortcut multiplication is stunningly clever. It's a rare feature to find in anything other than the faucet machines and of course the Heyman. And I would say that for that reason this is one of the favorite mechanical calculators that I have and it's why I was so distraught when the capacitor blew out and why I was so happy to finally have it back in working order again. It was a little bit of a stunner when the clearing didn't work as you saw in the last video. However, as luck would have it, well not luck really, but the act of lubricating it actually made it so that the clearing works fine again. And Therefore, I would say that this is restored to perfect working order. A true workhorse made in the 1950s here in front of you today in 2018. What a marvel. It's of course a little bit scuffed and it shows its age, but what great historical artifact doesn't. So, I would like to thank you very much for watching you've had a delightful time seeing this old thing in action, getting the full coverage it so deserves after so long time. It has been quite thrilling for me to make this video, finally, I've been looking forward to it. And again, hope you enjoyed it. As always, I very much appreciate reading your comments. I have noticed that I am subscribed to by some seriously cool people. And I've been reading your comments and they've been giving me a spring in my step throughout the day. So thank you very much for that. And as we come to a close, I would like to wish you all a happy day, evening, morning, midday, afternoon, supper time, what have you. Thank you very much for watching.